Got to do some shout outs to the people from uh, Kilifi County whom I met over the weekend. He said, Salimia, how about to Sana? We listen to the show, we follow the conversations, starting from the governor of Kilifi mm -hmm. to the executive committee members for environment in Kilifi County, to the Oron of uh, Tavita County, to somebody from Plan International called Lillian. She also said, you know what, go and say hi to City and Ndu. Yeah. Even the government is listening to the conversation this morning and that's why <laughs> why this, this the government, title. Here. government deputy deputy government spokesman <laughs> right here yeah. gabriel muduma is our guest for the next hour good morning gabriel. asante sana and thank you for inviting me here karibu sana asante. now that you know we are where we are with the government praise god <laughs> no? amen oh, okay. very good amen uh, very good and city. amen <laughs> city yes please welcome pastor gabriel with uh, the day's proverb right, oh. well. Mm. Our proverbs for <laughs> the whole of this week are from the country of Benin. Kotonu. Kotonu. Obena. Well, Kotonu is actually their largest city. Mm. The capital is called Porto Novo. Porto Novo. Porto Novo. Yes. Okay. But you're right. Kotonu for a long time was precisely that. Mm. But it's now just the largest city. They realized the administrative center doesn't necessarily have to be the largest city. Many West mm. African countries did this. They've come to that realization. Yeah. Cote d'Ivoire, Nigeria. Mm. Uh, Start off with one place, then you say, no, no. We'll let's talk to this one of ours. Let, let's move this thing somewhere Kenya, else. Guys. Talk to Kenya. We'll talk to this one of ours. This government of ours, we'll yeah. talk to it. Yeah. So and tell it. Nairobi, Nairobi does not have to be the capital. South Africa has moved. Yes. Ah, Nigeria actually did from yes, Lagos to Abuja. Twenty-five years ago. Yeah. 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 So city. Good place though. The relatives of the mad. Place, actually. Mm. Okay. The proverb for the day. Okay. The relatives of the mad are in more shame than the mad. The relatives of the mad are in more shame than the mad. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tongue twister. Mm. <laughs> the mad here. <laughs> Is M A D, not mm. M U D. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yes. Do that is specifically meant for you. Yeah, and, right. not, and not M A D D. Yes. Mado. Or, or M A D E. <laughs> or Mado's relatives. <laughs> Paul Kelemba. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to Paul Kelemba? What he, happened to Mado? He's alive and well. Ah, excellent. You don't read the standard, do you? No, you don't. Because if you did, you'd know he's alive and well. See? Mm. See? Si. 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 Among <laughs> the many things. Ah, yeah. What's your interpretation of this one? Of what? The mud. The proverb. Well, I told you it's a tongue twister. I can I, I cannot make I cannot make anything out of it. Can't make head or tail of it. Now mud is a relative of the mud. Uh, the relative. The only thing I know, the good line that I know about the mud is when we pray for the rain, we must deal with the mud as well. No, that's mud. This was saying mud you like said mud. <laughs> oh oh cuckoos. <laughs> yes, manoki. <laughs> no wonder. <laughs> Manoki, <laughs> uh, no, ma I, the relative of the mud is mud. I okay. I told you it's a tongue twister. No, oh. please repeat the proverb. Please do. The relatives of the mad are in more shame than the mad. Oh, I seem to be getting it. Of relatives. course. <clears throat> let me try. Let me try. Let me attempt. Please. Uh, so here we're talking about somebody who's cuckoos, the relatives, because probably of his actions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, and I think I'm getting it right because of his actions. Mm. Um, you know, they'll always be put to shame. But mm. again, they, 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 need to, they need to take him to get better treatment, I think. Okay. Mm. That's good. Mm. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Yes. You see? Ah, yeah. Need I say more? No, no you don't. You, you no. put it Thank well. Thank you. Mm. Very, very well indeed. Yeah, excellent. Excellent. So the Serikali came out of uh, Naivasha after a retreat, mm -hmm. which brought together the senior government officers, cabinet secretaries, principal secretaries, senior directors, <coughs> and uh, government spokesman, and yeah. his deputies uh -huh. were all there. Before the retreat, the government spokesman, Dr. Isaac Moura, had been here and he told us that one of the things that you're going to do as your office is to go and have a conversation with the government and say, this is a public perception mm -hmm. on how the government is performing. Mm -hmm. Did you present that? We did. What did you tell them? Uh, just exactly that. What? We told them what was going on. You see, the beauty about uh, being in the office that we hold, we, we get to hear a lot. Uh, we get to sit down with great people like yourselves we get to be told what people are saying and the perceptions that you're talking about mm. we generally have conversations deep and wide 
and um, it's sometimes only uh, in good nature of what we do in terms of communication mm. that you also bring out the good as well as the bad and you have a conversation and say what can we change in terms of perception as they say communication is perception and here you say this is what we've done well this is not well i mean this is the areas that we are not doing very well mm. and this is what we need to improve mm. you see most of the time we, we we have it that if you probably are just waiting for something to mellow so that you can communicate better K kenyans and including ourselves mm. we've taken it upon ourselves to think nothing is happening and probably at uh, that particular moment that's when the things are so deep that there's so much going on and you're waiting for that product to be ready so that you can communicate it's in its entirety mm. and sometimes uh, you find these are the times where you ask for people to just be patient mm. and uh, you guide them okay. in uh, ways where people can actually understand that which you're doing in the background remember Eric many times we 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 see as we see government as this machinery that is always moving mm. and uh, many a times where we will throw rocks and, and and that's what i see that's what we used to do back in the day you know at one point i remember senior <laughs> we used to call kibaki bubu you remember those days mm. why because he was not doing much of the talking that did not mean he was not doing much of the doing. In fact, mm. are we not the same people who are now today trying to copy some of the things that he did? Mm. So are some of the things that we are trying to bring out and uh, in, in, in terms of communication, yes. So mm. to answer your question, yeah, we were able to bring forward the good, the bad and the ugly okay. and we aligned. I'm curious as to what are some of those things that you then or the government has accepted mm -hmm. that are not going so well that need to be addressed? What are some of those things from a government perspective and not even just bringing into perspective or into discussion what Kenyans feel? What are some things that you have realized have not gone so well and are not going so well that need to be addressed? Now, actually, and that's actually an amazing question because those are some of the things that brought this uh, retreat into fruition so how we started was uh sometime last year towards the end of the year we had a meeting uh more of a mini retreat that uh, you know preceded the one that was in uh, nanyuki mm. and so what came out was we were looking to course correct what had we agreed back then that had not you know gotten traction mm what did we need to change because sometimes you can even have policies you know that eric you can start out doing something and you realize wow there, there's there's so much issues that are being thrown out whether it's coming through the legislators whether it's coming through the courts what do we need to do then how do we course correct mm. and um, that is what actually led to this retreat uh it came as a um, backdrop of uh moses cs moses Korea and team mm. his office doing nearly 23 24 around their mm. road shows to nearly all ministries to all ministries so to speak mm. uh they also had a conversation with the judiciary went on to have another conversation with the state law office and this we were doing to just find out where were we in the grand scheme of the bottom-up economic transformation model rem uh, agenda remember this is what the president had promised kenyans this was our agenda and so it has become evident that after every few months mm. we go back and see and check what are we good. yeah are we still so let me ask the question again yeah. what are some of those things that you've realized that have not gone well that need to be addressed for instance let me pick uh, let me pick um, let me pick two and this uh you know this found uh placement in the in in the in the courts mm. one of them really you remember we we had started rolling out uh, the maisha card and uh the courts mm -hmm. you know uh put uh, 
uh, in, in, in lugha ya mtani we say in linuliwa handbrake mm. uh, but we got a reprieve last week mm. uh, when uh, that matter was you know thrown out of court and now we can continue with the new ids mm. uh, those are some of the things that we brought to the fore what what did we need to do was it a framework issue that we needed to sit down yeah so those are some of the things that you could see so what lesson ahead. have you learned from that because it's not just that if you look at the housing levy issue mm -hmm. went to court and questions were raised on what's the framework for managing this mm -hmm. hence the housing fund mm -hmm. you look at that maisha card mm -hmm. it's a similar thing to what happened to huduma the huduma number issue was the same issue mm -hmm. you are rolling out a huduma issue i mean a huduma card without a proper framework on data security. Er, Eric, let, let me... And the lessons from government then, in fact, we spoke to the person who was in charge of a room number at that point, were like, okay, yeah, we actually had gone several steps ahead. In this one that you've just raised of the Maisha card, what lesson have you picked from that matter in court? Let, 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 me, let, let, me, bring you, let me bring you to speed. Sometimes when, like you're saying, you may move faster and forget other aspects yeah of 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 onboarding mm. that policy it's not that you're doing anything wrong yeah it's more like how you would say and and, and i'm really trying to get you a good example where you can say you know i'll go somewhere using my money and then come and claim mm. remember you've done nothing wrong that is actually an acceptable norm of doing things mm. now we've always thought yeah, and this is sometimes why you see there are some gray areas between many areas of government and, and, and the judiciary. I now, being in government, I see why some of these things crop up. Mm. For instance, just the other day I was sitting down with uh, some people from the uh, state law office. And I saw the government has active cases there are active cases against the government mm. 57000 active cases against the government mm -hmm. now most of the time most of the time we think that there's something wrong that has happened but we have been dealing with a myriad of so many things eric so many that sometimes you wonder was this necessary was what for instance for instance let me give you for instance we are told of a company that wanted to uh, upgrade our airport somebody lost the tender uh, went to court. The company that had won the bid uh, started waiting for matters to be done and the, you know to be given uh, 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 or for the court to pronounce herself on how this matter should go. But it took long. It took two years. And the investor was like, no, I have other places I can go and invest my money. We lost out on that. Why? Because somebody decided. And there are so many cases that happen on a daily basis. Somebody loses. Attended, they go to court. We have an active one. And actually, it's touching on the media houses. This one of my gov. Somebody lost the tender. They don't believe they lost it uh, in the right way. They are in court right now. Or they've gone to court. And if you look at their bid, you know, it was very high. You or we have mastered the art of just stringing government projects. Is that the lesson that you took to Naivasha? It's not that took. People, it's not took. I have, learned. I am vex, learning. Vexatious litigants yes, going yes, to court yes. to stop a government program. And, and it's not one, two or three. There so nothing so wrong that the government has done. I, like Ndu was asking, the, the are there that things looked? that you have seen that you have admitted that here we are going in the wrong direction and maybe we need to course correct? There are some that we, like you've said, the meeting itself was about course correction and it's not matter, uh, it's not to do with matters uh, in, in the legalese. No, we're talking about some of the things that we ourselves, some of the goals that we have set. Okay, and we now said, then, we are moving in this please, direction and we answer, realize, wait a minute. Answer Ndu's question now directly. What? Am I not answering it directly? No, no you're not. I don't know. You've not told me. There <laughs> could be four things. Even tell us two. That you sat around the room and you put heads together and said, guys, mm -hmm. this is not going the way in which we thought it would. This is not giving us the results that we thought they would give. Do, I've, answered what, what I've answered the first one on IDs. 
and no, we are happy. Wait, went to court. No, no, no. I was just telling you mm. what has happened out of the IDs, and now we are happy that the government will be printing nearly 15,000 IDs per day. Mm -hmm. The second one, which uh, we've learned a few lessons and a few things, were uh, the issues to do with passports. And I know that is a very hot topic as we speak right now. Mm. What have you learned? Uh, so, two things out of the passport issues. For the longest, we've not invested on the right technology. For the longest. Nearly 10 years. And what is the yeah? right technology? Uh, we hear you're talking about uh, the printers. Here you're talking about the people who, or the companies, the suppliers, yeah, who make um, uh, the booklets. So it's an entire ecosystem that has not been well oiled. All right? Is it, now, is it well oiled or upgraded? No, well, you, you could, two, actually you could say, you could, let, let me use, yeah, let me use the word oiled. I like mine better. And I'll tell you why. So here you have a country that was doing three or oh, 300,000 um, booklets or passport booklets a year. Mm -hmm. And uh, the government came with interventions of labor mm -hmm. export. Mm -hmm. And Latif, guess how many applicants the government is receiving a year now? A million plus. Mm -hmm. Uh, so here we come and realize that uh, the technology that's here needed to have been upgraded some time back. That has not happened. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you know, there's been issues uh, in Yayo House. Mm. Uh, and the cabinet secretary has come out to really accept that some of the things going on at Nyayo House needed to have been uh, fixed. The corruption... These are things we are learning. Um, the lethargy at times. Uh, and to me, it was actually a moment of reflection when a cabinet secretary comes and takes responsibility, personal responsibility, and says, I am going to fix this. All right? Notwithstanding, notwithstanding that we have about 70 something, nearly 80,000 uncollected passports. Again, this is the Monainchi now, Monainchi facing. The people who have not come out to collect their passports, you know, what, 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 have they, what have they been doing? What should the government do about people who just apply and then they just, you know, go into oblivion? What, 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 must, what must this environment, you know, how must this environment be managed? So there are some of the things that, you know, we are coming to learn. And so the, the lesson way, in passports you know, is a technology lesson yes. and a procurement lesson that we both need. Both. We need to upgrade our technology, so we need to go into procurement. And, and not only... And the not cabinet only, secretary said this over six months ago. And not only, not only, not only in the area of passports alone. The greatest lesson that most of us are learning, mm. even though I learned this a long time ago, building a nation... Eric, is not inherently... Let's stick to the passports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the for same thing. It's the same bit. thing. Just You're just building a nation, even with passports, bit. Eric. You see, even this with passports. Specifically, because people even write to us, even right yes. now on <clears throat> YouTube, you'll see the comments. Mm -hmm. People who are saying, I applied for my passport three, four years ago, I still haven't received my passport. Mm -hmm. I haven't been called in to go and just do the biometrics. People who've gone and <clears throat> presented their biometrics, they're still waiting for their passports to be processed. With, this with, is a big issue. With Kithura Kindiki has gone to Nyaya House more than once. Yes. Changed the top leadership of mm -hmm. the uh, immigration department. Mm -hmm. Said, we are going to sort this matter up, out. It's been close to a year and, since and, and, the cabinet and, secretary has been there in Naivasha. You're not dealing what with the, did the cabinet secretary say in Naivasha. Same thing he what came is out. Our problem? Same, same thing he came if out and said. Same thing he came hold out on, and Hold on, Gabriel. Hold on. If it's procurement, has procurement started? If it's about a change of human beings, mm -hmm. you change the director of immigration. Mm -hmm. The new one even went to 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 all the other offices mm -hmm. for immigration. So. 
Eric, this what's is, happening? This, this, this is the issue. This is the issue because mm. it is a problem and a quality problem that must be solved. First of all, we underline that twice. It's when a is problem it that solved? must be solved. It is being solved as we speak right now. Now, the one thing we cannot so run away from. Happening. The one thing we cannot run away from is the backlog. That is that is as we speak is being worked on right now as we how? speak. The other thing. The how? Other how? Thing, how? Let's specifics, please. So two things. Mm. Uh, the booklets that were available, mm. and you had the CSA, uh, were the 50 page. Is it 50? Yeah, 54 something, I think, like that. Mm -hmm. Those were available. And so there are people that I know who've changed from the earlier booklet that they had asked for, which was 30 something pages, mm -hmm. and they've come to the to the to, to the, to the 50 page. now l let's let's be honest it's not like there are no passports that are being issued in nyayo house that that's something else eric that we are doing wrong we are assuming as if nyayo house has been closed that's not that's not the case i've just told you there are passports that still remain uncollected i hope we can Wait, get what, this which what means which means oh, no, 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 we cannot say what china nazo the they were printed <laughs> people the have backlog. not just come out to collect so the backlog has been there because uh -huh. of some of the issues that i've told you there what was also being, another issue what there was is another being issue done to address this backlog there was another issue right now as we speak uh the cabinet secretary gave us a timeline mm. mm -hmm. give us a timeline of when this backlog will be sorted and when these passports will actually have gotten to power mm. because there are so many people mm -hmm. who really wanted to travel mm -hmm. people have missed out on schooling people have missed out on going uh, for their for for, for their for, for, for their work doctor which the visits. same government told Correct. them would be available Correct. In and other we countries. totally accept that mm -hmm. we totally accept that and you're all running away from that what's the time but uh, the timeline that we were given or that has been given is Anywhere now, it's it's between 90, 90 days, I think. Ninety days since we should when? since see. Naivasha. Yes, ninety, 90 days. days ninety days Naivasha. we should we should be we should start yeah. seeing things happen. Did the cabinet secretary t talk about the previous timelines that he had given, and why he yes. missed those timelines? It's not about missing. It's not about missing. It's what is coming. Well, he to said the this no, issue no, is no, going to be no. so sorted see, out within a certain timeline. Eric, previously, I, I, rem I know it what was he said. not sorted out I within know, that timeline. No, no, I know what he said. I know what he said. But you cannot run away. You cannot run away from the mere fact that it's not government doing this. You have suppliers whose. Uh, uh, deliveries were affected. Okay. And by the way, COVID did affect so many things. This one came to the fore. We ah. were learning it. That that <laughs> no 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 no. I'm telling you. Wait, I am Roger. telling you. I'm telling you. Gabriel, do do you think please? This is I what you think, you. Eric. Wait you. a minute. Wait please. a minute. You think you, are, you think that passports, all these things, are manufactured at Nyayo? I don't no. think. The cabinet secretary so, came and said, "We have an issue. Yes." And I have been here once, yes. I have launched an RRI within timelines, yes. And within this time, we will see a proper addressing of this backlog now, of passports. What you're, I am what, what you're not question. counting, what I you're not counting, Eric, question. and you're doing, you're doing this debate <laughs> at the service, what you're counting is there has been something that has been going on. Passports are being released, hmm. but not... So in the manner it we, in which me and you expect. I've just given you, I've just, so given, you, I've just given you mm. how many, and here I'm talking in terms of numbers. I think the question From 300,000 now, mm. you have so many applicants all of a sudden that have come by to a million. Okay, Gabriel, so I know. here, yeah. this is not an issue about what was happening three, four, five years ago. Yes, Look, we have agreed that the number has really jumped and there the are certain things that are happening in su succession here yes. which we can't run away from and i know we're going to go to a break in a minute mm -hmm. in a in a bit but look every time something is said it doesn't matter what is said mm -hmm. but that what takes precedent is what was said before correct okay mm -hmm. that we saw the cs mm -hmm. kindiki at nyayo house a couple of times mm -hmm. saying certain things mm -hmm. giving certain assurances and guarantees mm -hmm. the question here which overrides anything else is mm -hmm. This 90-day period that we're talking about, mm. within which things would have been cleared, mm. that you will be able to go to Nyayo House, make your application, make your payment, and then shortly after that, be called to come and then capture your biometrics. Correct. What you're telling us now <clears throat> is that unequivocally, 
-hmm. in the next 90 days, whatever is happening there would have been sorted out. Mm -hmm. And this supplier that you talk about being the problem and whoever is supplying booklets or machines, all of these Mm -hmm. processes work Mm -hmm. in congruence, whether we like it or not. Mm -hmm. The question is, are we saying that in 90 days, according to the information you have and what was discussed in Naivasha, Mm -hmm. that within 90 days, this whole clog... Mm -hmm essentially will be sorted out and then it will start to run seamlessly is that what we are saying correct and by the way why we not why we not and, and, and in fact give give this the same weight that we've given on ids my yeah mm. we have a serious backlog why because the court did what it did but guess what after the lifting of that injunction the government has already started rolling out 15,000 IDs a day to clear that backlog. So here, it's not, Eric, it's not about, this is not an issue of the government uh, is just doodling their farms and not doing anything, right? It's about sorting a problem that we know exists, and it's going to be done. If there's something I am so sure about... <laughs> It's this issue of both IDs let's and passports. It's let's, going to be done. Let's, let's take a break. It's 34 minutes to 8. Gabriel Mutuma is the <laughs> deputy government spokesman. He is very sure that this time, this will be done. passports will be done. A hundred percent. And we can come back here and discuss this. Three months. Yes. <laughs> People in Baringo are being killed left, right and centre. People in Zamburu are okay. being killed. People in Zamburu are being killed. They are asking, where is our government? We know there's been a government op- a security operation in this area since last year. We had the deputy governor of West Pocot County at this desk, uh, where you're seated on Friday, was it? Yes. And he was talking about the same, same insecurity mm-hmm. continuing in West Pocot. Mm-hmm. And he was wondering <clears throat> what's happening. And saying, in fact, the interior ministry seems to have abandoned the officers it has sent to the ground. Well, I don't think that's the case. Mm. But uh, like I told you, um, that's something on another level in matter security. But one thing I can tell you without your contradiction is that any lives, any life of a Kenyan lost, it's just one too many. And it's my prayer, really, that um, the insecurity around that area will be sorted as a matter of supreme urgency uh the truth of the matter is we we it's it's been more like it's 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 nearly grained as a custom that that area you know for the longest you know whether you're looking at it this year 10 years ago it is the same thing that has continued to happen i am hoping that we will find a lasting and permanent solution Mm is my prayer that that will be found going back to what ndu asked earlier is this one of those things that the government can actually lift its hand and say you know what e no 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 listen to this listen to the chronology of events here Uh during campaigns the president promises this issue of banditry i can address it i have a formula i tried the formula before Mm -hmm. this formula was then um abandoned by Mm -hmm. the previous administration Mm -hmm. which i was serving he comes in and says, and even goes to this area and says, you know what, you bandits, you cannot try me enough. Mm-hmm. I'm going to crush you. The cabinet secretary says, we're going to crush the bandits. Mm-hmm. Enlists the help <coughs> of the Kenya Defense Forces without parliamentary approval, or less, but let's not even dwell on that. But the Kenya Defense Forces are sent to the ground to help police with an operation that's gone to close to a year now. Mm-hmm. And the matter has not been conclusively addressed. Is this a Eric, thing that Eric, the government Eric, is prepared to wrong. say? You're wrong. By saying the um, matter has not been conclusively arrested. Addressed. You see... Um, has it? Uh, you, you see, the thing... And I don't know why, and I don't know why you like doing this. Yeah. You put, you put, you put it in a frame as if nothing is happening. There's a lot of operation, boots on the ground taking place as we speak. Just the other day, I think two weeks ago, we saw one of the area leaders who was arrested with intelligence that some of these things that we are seeing are political. Is he in court? Um, Now, once you've been arrested, the wheels of justice Not the first time this particular area leader was arrested. And it's it's not only him. I know so many people Mm. who've been arrested within that operation. They're arrested and and released, released. Gabriel. And you see, there you go. There you go again. The government 
the government, once they've arrested you, mm. the police, mm. they take you to court. Right? Yes. Mm. What does the court do? The court listens to the evidence that you take to court. And if they release you, has the government done their job? Has you anybody, see, the Gabriel? Is, the thing is, the thing okay. is, Eric, and this uh, is why I want us to avoid there you this go, debate. There you go you, again. You think nothing is being to, done. No, I have told you. I have, I have not told you. Nothing mm -hmm. is being Boots done. Boots on the ground. Mm -hmm. I agree. The cabinet secretary is usually around that area on, in so many can I repeat? Can I repeat my question? Can I repeat my question? Almost a year into the operation, in West Pokot, Samburu, Baringo, Elgeo Maraquet, Turkana, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Not one person has been taken to court by this government as being behind banditry. Have you mentioned West Pokot? Yeah. Yes, I did. Okay. Not one person. Are you sure about that, Eric? You can tell us who. And you can tell us how far this case has gone. What I know. Okay. Mm. What I know. The cabinet secretary know. told us he even knows the spiritual leaders of these people and soon he's going, going to, to out them. them. Hasn't. Schools that were closed during the height of this banditry not reopened. Eric, in fact, people who are displaced schools. because of this banditry not returned home. A chief was killed over the weekend. A chief. An MCA was, was shot, shot dead. It was an MCA, MCA yes, was not, shot, right, not a chief. Right. An MCA was shot dead over the weekend. And others and, have and, been shot and, and killed. As, let, let's when say, I say it has not been conclusively addressed, that's exactly what I mean. Eric, conclusively. Eric, matters, matters security, and I'm not talking about that area alone. Look at it nationally. Yeah? Mm. Because this forms the base of our conversation. Every little detail that I know currently is being taken to assure that all of us are safe. Now, is that a guarantee? No. Mm. Correct? But that does not mean that the government is not doing anything to ensure that my life and yours are safe. You know, me have come to one conclusion. Yeah? <laughs> so what I know, what I know, mm. there's so much in terms of operations mm. going on in that particular area. Is mm. it a success? It is not an issue about success. It is going to be a success at the end of the day. Because like I'm telling you, when does, the, lives, when does this day end? Where lives of Kenyans yeah, mm. are being destroyed. You are not talking about lives. You're talking about property. Yeah? Their way of <laughs> livelihood that is being affected. That situation must be changed. And it's going to be changed. Gabriel, what prevents the government from actually conclusively resolving and dealing with these matters? What do you mean? What prevents them? Are they not doing it? No, no. I said just because, just because we, no, I said just because they've not, just because it's not done that there's no banditry, okay, and I don't an think, and I honestly don't think we'll ever get to a point yes, where we'll not have criminals. Yeah, these people will always be with us. So what it means is that the government must always have their best foot forward. Gabriel, let me in all give matters an example operation. of uh, something that was done conclusively. Mount Elgon had issues. Mm -hmm. Worse than this, people's ears were being chopped off. Uh -huh. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. That matter has not arisen again. That is being dealt with conclusively. Yes, you'll hear pockets of this and this, but dusted. Mm -hmm. Across the border, the, in the Karamoja you, you area, still, you still hear, you still hear, like you're saying, yeah, you few pockets here and there. You hear, but in same Uganda. way, same way, same way, same way. You've had, you know, the times when Mungiki really were running, you know, matters in central. You don't hear of them anymore. Just little pockets, like you're saying here and there. You have correct this situation exactly. This situation. I was also saying this situation in Baringo. We will, the one time we will sit down here with you and we'll say it is being dealt with. It has been uh, sorted. And we'll just be talking about the small spot. Oh, we're speaking futurally now. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I know for sure. Hmm. I know for sure. What, what, what I don't want us to believe, Eric, what I don't want us to believe is as if the government is doing nothing when the lives of Kenyans... We are not saying... We, don't, we don't think it's so, doing nothing. So trust me when I tell you, hmm. this matter will be solved.
this matter will be solved. Uh, and I hope and I hope one day me and you will come and sit down here. Yeah. Same way we are talking about the Matakwe issue in Mount Elgon. Yeah. And same way we think we are talking about Mungiki. That one day we'll be saying, well, this issue has been sorted, just little, little yeah. pockets of problems. Gabriel, you know one thing that's very interesting, and I think one problem that governments, and it's not just the Kenya government, I think governments across the board, maybe mm. there, there are few that maybe have, have cracked it, is the aspect of communication. Mm -hmm. Now, um, for matters such as this, Communication, I think, is key, and I'll just give you a small story. My father used to tell me about. Uh, it's told of a man who came home one day and he was waiting for food to be cooked. It was a thing to look forward to at the end of the day, and his wife was preparing. She had prepared the fish, the meat, and the thing for the soup. He was sitting in the outer courtroom and uh, veranda, rather. Every now and then he would call. Is it ready? She would say, "We're working on it." Is it ready? We're working on it some point she would come out so eventually she brought all the things for Parisian. she came and sat with him and she showed him look at what i'm doing i'm preparing the vegetable I'm preparing this i'm preparing this mm -hmm. now we're putting it into the pot so he could see the process food soup was ef is eventually cooked and ready but she was inside before not she was just telling him with her mouth mm -hmm. it's getting ready it's getting ready it took her to bring everything out to the veranda and prepare in his presence and now explain totally to him the believe. process. Yeah. Do you see where I'm going? Correct. Totally. Don't you think it is necessary for government at some mm. point to communicate with its people? Mm -hmm. And this is the thing about communication, whether it is good, whether it is bad, mm -hmm. whether things are going upside down, mm -hmm. that Kenyans do not hear about the things that are happening from government. You we know, can't deny thing, that. One, one, thing I like, one thing I like about uh, my president is that... Uh, he made a very deliberate choice. And this is what he said. And uh, he stole some of us. Um, and I also believe he's actually uh, talked about it in the open, that no matter what, he'll always be, be truthful with the Kenyan people, no matter what, even if the answers are not what we want to hear. Um, there has been areas where even myself I'd have said, wait a minute, I think this would have been said better. Um, I think uh, this ought to have come out at a certain time. Uh, Eric, me and you being communicators and the two of us, uh, we all agree on the committance the concomitants, as we call them, of communication, mm. where you say who communicates, when do they communicate, how do they communicate. And there are times, not that you don't want to communicate, but you want to communicate a holistic picture or image. And here your example actually is very validated or it's, bring, it's brought to validation. When you say the guy wanted to see food being made in front of him, that's what most of us wants to do. We really want to see it now. We are the now people. But again, I take you back to what I earlier told you on. Just because somebody does not verbalize it, it does not mean that it's not being done. Kibaki gave us, the late president Kibaki gave us that example, mm. that you can actually be doing things. And when everything is done, you bring it out in the open. And people are grateful for now. The issue we seem to be facing um, in our time is a lot of miscommunication and disinformation mm -hmm. because sometimes you will even people within the media you will run with things that are really not true or correct mm. and like, we have to like follow you around like what, for no no i'm just I'm, I'm, I'm just saying this without an example no i want just, an example. for instance how many times how many times let me not quote somebody how many times have you seen even some of the media houses, they've printed newspapers that they recall a chapter mm. and say, hey, by the way, no, it was not like this. Mm. How many times have we dealt with fake news? How many times have your media houses taken a picture and brought it to their social medias and put up a huge fake in red? 
-hmm. that they have to follow information to say this did not come from our media station. That is what we are dealing with. That's a very good example I can give you. So that is what we are running after. The issue has been who or where are you getting your communication? Is this, is this communication truthful? You know, mm -hmm. there's something Eric I wanted to tell you, um, and this I'm not really jumping from the question that you asked. I think I've answered it. But there's something I wanted to tell you that I've come to learn over the years. And I think this is why we came into the ideas and passport. Building a nation, mm. honestly, it's not uh, inherently a, 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 a do it yourself job. I don't think we'll ever come to a point where we will raise our hands and say, hooray, we've built a nation. nation is built. We will never. Mm. Because at every point, a nation that must become su successful must be subjected to progressive advancement guess yeah. what eric as this bypass we are finishing the southern bypass we go start on the northern bypass the minute we are finishing the northern bypass we must come back to the southern mm. and ensure that it's preserved the portals that are there we work on it that is how that is how you build a nation and that does not necessarily mean that when something is happening after you've built something that a few, you you know, and even a, a small portal here does not mean that there's anything bad that was done. It not. just means mm. that you must be on top of the game. Yep. And this is where, this is where mm. a country like ours now mm. is in serious need of leaders who can make hard decisions. You need leaders with the, for, the, 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 the testicular fortitude we say, we, to make hard decisions. Are you saying we don't have those right now? No, we have now. This is so one, one of them. The I can give now. you an example. Yeah. And these are the hard decisions that we are making. Okay. You know, when things like, uh, like, like, uh, like, like the housing, mm -hmm. when the president comes out and says, guys, we have been, we have been importing 500 billion shillings worth of food mm. per year. I just, just, just look at that. Look, look, how does, what does that tell us? And he has said, in the next five years, we are going to cut that by a half. Mm -hmm. And in the next 10 years, what is he telling us? What is he telling us? That actually we have been heading or we are heading in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. And this must be course corrected. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. When we talk about uh, re-engineering a place like Kiambu. I don't know whether when the last time you visited Kiambu. Mm, yesterday. 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 The, the Do you know I was uh, Eric, Eric yeah. I was being reminded by my uncle. Mm. Had a long conversation with him. He was reminding me, Gabriel, you see Motaiga Golf Club? And I said, yeah, yeah. All the way to a place called Kist. Mm. All the way. Yeah. Back in our days. It was coffee plantation. There was no building. We couldn't see. Mm. Today today as we speak is a concrete jungle what is happening to our coffee and tea had we and we still have time i believe mm. to re-engineer how kiambu should be we have the opportunity to course correct some of the damages that are being done our so, coffee there, the coffee so, that was coming from kiambu the tea that was coming from kiambu we can still reclaim it else. Yeah. no we can still reclaim it what <laughs> I thought you were doing places. Well. Yes, that's what I'm saying. saying but you see, and infrastructure yes, is and the way to go. yes, yeah. and exactly that's why we want to run away from this single dwelling Gabriel, and go vertically. Gabriel, the vertical, the vertical spacing is the way to go. Kiambu is, a, is an extension of Nairobi. Yeah, but you see, no, 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 it has, no, 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 yes. no. Go on. You see, we cannot go with that mentality. Mm. No, it's just I, a reality. I Gabriel. It's not the reality. I refuse to believe that because. If we go by that notion, I guarantee you, there will be no place in this country Gabriel, to we farm. Have, we have a minute. I have to ask this question. Mm. You mentioned something which I found particularly interesting with reference to government bashing. Yeah. What did you mean? Yeah, of course. You know, you've made it a habit. Your oh, people, that everything you do... Is <laughs> <laughs> it's bash government but let me tell you what i think the government the government has taken its share of bashing and uh, let me tell you it is okay it is okay uh, we all we all want to be and it's our responsibility really mm -hmm. to hold the government of the day accountable accountable it's our duty as kenyans mm. 
more so when you're paying taxes. Mm. And here I'm not just talking about the national government. Mm. We also need to hold to account the county governments because yes. All right? mm. we need to hold them into account. Mm. But one thing we cannot do, it cannot be a field day that every time you sit down, it's bashing government. Yes! Yeah, I mean, it, sometimes it appears. Sometimes, bashing? no. Sometimes, sometimes it's, you know, actually, it can actually be, it, it may appear fashionable to do so. But at the end of the day, just be, and this is what I keep asking people, just whatever you do, yeah. be fair. Be patriotic. Be fair. Patriotic, you know now you, how can I tell you to start being patriotic? This is your country. By nature, By you should be patriotic. the government I've put in office does the job I gave it to do. Correct. Pure and simple. Correct. But be fair. Be fair. I can that's be what the fair government, by telling that's the government, what the government to do asks. the job it's supposed to do. No, People that's need, not. Gabriel. That's holding, hold, the, hold them to account. In the next hour, can you answer questions from the public? Of course. Very good. That's what we'll be doing. This is the Situation Room. The only way to start your day.